from the time of the destruction of the Second Temple and later the forced exile of the Jewish people from the land of Israel, Jews have dreamed of returning to the Holy Land. Jews pray three times a day facing the direction of Jerusalem, and Jewish prayer is full of lamentations for the land and a yearning to return. Throughout the period, there has always been a small Jewish community living in Tzfat, Hebron, Tiberia, and Jerusalem, and many Jews would travel to the land to die so that they could be buried there. But for most, the idea of a return would have to wait till the days of the coming of the Messiah. That all began to change in 19th century Europe. As a wave of nationalism swept Europe, some Jews began asking themselves, what about us? One of the first to call for Jews to return to the land of Israel was Rabbi Yehuda Alkali. He wrote in 1843, as the initial stage of redemption of our souls, we must cause at least 22,000 to return to the Holy Land. Alkali himself moved the land of Israel as an example to others. Another rabbi, Rabbi Tzvi Kalisha, published in 1863, The Search for Zion. In it he wrote, The redemption will begin with the generating of support among philanthropists and with the gaining of the consent of nations to the gathering of scattered Israel into the Holy Land. A non-rabbinic figure during that same time was Moses Hess. He wrote Roman Jerusalem in 1862. That book, which at the time received minimal notice, called for Jews to return to the land. That return would turn the Jews into a normal people. Hess was also the first to call for return because Jews would never be safe in the diaspora. The first transformative leader was Leo Pinska from Odessa. In 1882, in the shadow of the Russian pogroms, he wrote Auto-Emancipation. In it, he wrote that the Jews were a ghost people without a homeland. He insisted to provide safety to the Jewish people, it needed a land of its own, any land. Pinska became a supporter of the Chovetzion, which was a small movement made up of groups of people in cities throughout Eastern Europe who met and worked towards settling in the land of Israel. Pinska called a meeting of the different societies, and they met in Odessa in 1884. Chavavet Zion movement had a very practical result. Young Jews began to move to the land of Israel. This was a period where millions were moving from Eastern Europe to the United States. But a small group, totaling about 25,000 over the period between 1882 and 1903, decided that the land of Israel was their destination. They were called the first Aliyah, or Bilu. Most settled in established cities, but a small but important group set out to start new settlements. They included the settling of Peratikva, Gadera, Rishon Lezion, Rehovot, and many more small towns. Many had a very hard time, some died from disease, but despite all the hardships, they began to make a mark on the land. They had help from Baron Rothschild, who subsidized some of their endeavors and built schools for their children. By the end of the 19th century, approximately 50,000 Jews were living in the land of Israel. Over half of them subsisted on charity from abroad, but a growing number of them were working the land. The struggling Zionist movement was transformed by the vision of one man, Theodor Herzl. Herzl was an unlikely candidate, a mostly assimilated Jew who was a playwright and writer based in Vienna. He was deeply affected by the Dreyfus trial, where Alfred Dreyfus, a French army officer was convicted of treason against the army, primarily because he was a Jew. To Herzl, that said that even in emancipated France, a totally assimilated Jew could still face anti-Semitism. Herzl, as a result, came to the conclusion that there was no real future for the Jews of Europe. He wrote The Judenstadt, The State of the Jews, in 1895. The book, which was published in 1896, was received with universal acclaim. Herzl began working to achieve the goal. He met with European leaders, including the Ottoman Sultan, since the Ottomans ruled at the time where the future Jewish state was to be. In 1897, he called the first Zionist Congress, which took place in Basel, Switzerland. Delegates from throughout the world, including the United States, attended. There, the World Zionist Organization was founded which Herzl became the president of. For the rest of his life, until he died from a heart attack at the age of 44 in 1904, 
Herzl worked tirelessly to establish a Jewish homeland, even looked to creating a homeland in Uganda. His diplomatic efforts succeeded in putting the question of the homeland for the Jewish people on the world agenda. The creation, however, of the World Zionist Organization had an immediate impact in that it spurred more Jews to move to their ancient homeland, what became known as the Second Aliyah. That Aliyah received an additional boost from the Kishinev pogrom of 1903. A total of 35,000 Jews immigrated between 1904 and 1914, including some of the future leaders of the State of Israel, such as David Ben-Gurion. During this period, Tel Aviv was founded, as was the first kibbutz, the Ganya. The outbreak of World War I found the Zionists on both sides of the conflict, with Jews living under the Ottomans being suspected of being disloyal. Some, like the nearly spiring, were indeed working for the British. During the war, the Zionists, led by British scientist Chaim Weizmann, lobbied the British to support the Zionist cause. That resulted in the British government issuing in 1917 the Balfour Declaration. That declaration called for an establishment of a Jewish homeland in the area that was called Palestine at the time. In 1918, General Allenby conquered Palestine from the Ottomans. After the war, the new League of Nations gave the mandate to the area to the British, based on the Balfour Declaration. In 1920, the Arabs in Jaffa rioted against the continued Jewish immigration. That immigration, part of the Third Aliyah, brought 40,000 Jews to the land. Some were escaping the Russian Revolution. Many, however, were motivated by Zionist ideology and a desire to settle the land. During the 20s, many of the institutions that eventually became the cornerstone of Israel were created. They include the Jewish Agency, the Haganah, the Hebrew University, and the Technion. In 1929, the placement of a machitza, a partition separating men and women, at the Western Wall became an excuse for the Arabs to riot. Those riots spread to Hebron, where Jews and Arabs had been living in peace for hundreds of years. There, 66 Jewish men, women, and children were massacred. With the beginning of the Great Depression in 1929, anti-Semitism rose worldwide. This spurred even more Jews to move to pre-state Israel. They were part of the Fifth Aliyah. In 1932, Hitler came to power and immediately began issuing various anti-Jewish decrees. As a result, from 1929 to 1936, 188,000 new immigrants came to the land. They transformed the country, doubling the Jewish population. Many of the immigrants were from Germany and were able to bring some of their money with them. The cities, especially Tel Aviv, grew rapidly, with industry and cultural institutions developing. The Arabs living in the Mandate announced that they were beginning a revolt against the British. The revolt eventually was put down by the British, who worked closely with the Haganah in order to accomplish this goal. As a result of the revolt, the British created a royal commission led by Lord Peel. It recommended the partition of Palestine into a very small Jewish state and a much larger Arab state. The Jews accepted the plan, the Arabs rejected it. In 1939, the British issued the White Paper that limited Jewish immigration to 75,000 over five years and severely limited the purchase of land by Jews. Just when the Jews needed a homeland the most, the gates of the Mandate were closed to them.